What we do here is go back, 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 back. Please, we've got to let us out of here. Please, we've got to let us out of here. What happened? Help us out of here. Why are you here? You're not supposed to be here. Why do you have people locked up in cages? You need to vacate the premises immediately. No questions asked. No, please don't go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Best Pro Wrestling Commentary. I am your host, Roman Pierce. Today, we have a special show for you. We have a guest commentator, actor, writer, director, Larry Stanley. Wrestling fan. Big wrestling <laughs> fan. There you go, Larry. So what's been what's been up, Larry? I haven't seen you in a while. I know you're busy working on your new movie, The Grey Agenda. Yeah, Grey Agenda. It's a new movie. It's in post right now. Um, finishing up the editing, getting it scored. We also have one called Proud Souls that you worked on. Uh, that Absolutely. one's That one's wrapped up. Getting ready to put that one in a couple of festivals. See what happens with that one. Uh, I've got two going to Maddie GTV next year. Uh, Mr. Happy Pants and Decisions. They'll be on Maddie GTV. So if you have a Roku player, you can watch those on that channel. And uh, that's it, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I've known Larry Stanley for quite some time now. He's a go-getter. He's putting out all these independent films out there. So you can check out his IDMB page also, Larry Stanley. Check out his films. He has an awesome um, trailer and a reel going there. So you're also a big wrestling fan. And who? what do you think about this Roman Reigns situation? He finally won the WWE Championship. All right, man. This is another situation where the uh, WWE, they've taken a guy and they've tried to do different storylines with him because the audience isn't buying what he's selling. Absolutely. And and every storyline they do with this guy, they screw it up. I think yep. it's, we want this guy to succeed, but we're not sure how to make him succeed. So we're just gonna keep trying different stuff. But okay, if you're gonna put the belt on Sheamus, like they did, let him chase. I mean, that was the whole point, right? But you put it on Sheamus and all of a sudden Roman Reigns is the champion. What was the point of that? Why not just let him win at TLC? Now, would you say that's the reason they've had lackluster um, ratings? Because people are getting bored. And you know, these last few episodes, people are just kind of like, like you said, there's a storyline and it just kind of goes nowhere. And they throw it on Sheamus. That is it. Yeah, man, there is storylines going nowhere. I think what the WWE is doing right now, they're hiding their best talent. The best talent in the WWE, hands down right now, is Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose is the best talent in the WWE, and I think they know that, but they want to push Roman Reigns so bad that they keep Dean Ambrose you know un what? under his thumb. Could it be because he's The Rock's Cousin, it could, is there a favoritism there, Larry? It could be, and but you know, I I've watched. I am a wrestling dork, man. I'll mark out for <laughs> wrestling, so I've watched a lot of uh, behind the scenes yes. shoots. Yes, yes. yes, there you go. <laughs> and uh, like CM Punk was talking, even when these guys were in development, the WWE always was really high on Roman Reigns, maybe because it was his family, maybe because he has that look. You know, Vince is infatuated with this guy, so he's getting his his push, and he's right up at top. And it's just one of those things where fans they're not giving their fans enough credit to realize these guys either like somebody or not. So they took the damn Daniel Bryan storyline, who Daniel Bryan's a yeah, little guy, absolutely. underdog storyline works with him. Absolutely. But then you give it to this guy that's built and buff. But he can't talk on the mic. He has no promo skills whatsoever. That's why he needs a mouthpiece. So I don't understand why Dean Ambrose isn't like his mouthpiece, but you know, again, they're burying Dean Ambrose to push Roman Reigns, and I think that's one reason why fans resent him. And you know what? It makes sense now. I'm starting to think that they're just trying to uh, patronize Dwayne Johnson so that they could use him for another WrestleMania moment, which gets him a lot of ratings. Now, what do you think about Vince McMahon? He came back, and according to uprocks.com, uh, he brought back an additional 4 million viewers to this uh, last Monday Night Raw. Great move. I love the storyline. I love the way it played out. It was it was different. I mean, okay, I get it. Vince McMahon's there. But when your ratings are that low, and you get them back to where they were, does that really do anything? So, you know, that's what happened. The late ratings were Cheap a record. Pop. Yeah, it, exactly. That's exactly what it was. It was no... I was really disappointed with Vince McMahon. It was cool seeing him at first, but then the way the story Story played out. I was disappointed. I wanted more. Like, why didn't Roman Reigns attack him immediately? And uh, yeah, you know, why didn't Vince McMahon like immediately sick the League of Nations on him or something? It was just like, hey, here I am. I'm Vince McMahon. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, it's kind of like they drag it out a little bit too much. And I've noticed that with a lot of the younger superstars is they don't have the the right chemistry with the other wrestlers. What, like you said, Triple H stepped into the ring and he was looking at Sheamus, and it's almost like he's waiting for Roman Reigns. Like, come on, uh, it's your moment now. Beat me up. And it, it's just it's just too much. Time. Telegraphing. Yeah, and I think that might be pr the problem with Roman Reigns, too, is he's so scripted and so worried about messing up on the script, he's not doing what he does best. I think Roman Reigns would be more suited if he was a uh, Goldberg-type character. You know, if he was like... Silent, more silent. Silent yeah. and just an ass-kicker, you know, and that's Absolutely. what... Can you say ass on the show? Because I just did. Yeah. Can you say ass on the show? Because I just said, yeah, like, ass. three or four times. Yeah. Ass is okay? Okay. Uh, but ass. yeah, ass. Okay. <laughs> Roman Reigns is an ass-kicker, and uh, that's what he needs to be portrayed as. I don't need him, like, calling Sheamus tater tots or whatever. I need him just to shut oh, up. That go was out. so weak, yeah. Yeah, go out there, bang his fist, Superman punch somebody, call it a night, and go back to the back. That's what he does. 
Absolutely. One thing that I am high on though is Sasha Banks and also Lana. And you know Lana, she tweeted recently that she's doing the WWE Divas Christmas. So there's a photo of her there on the screen now. What do you think about Sasha Banks? Do you think that they should put her there? They're, they're, you know, the crowd wants her. Yeah, um, again, it's they always say do what's best for business. Sasha Banks would be good for business, but I don't understand why she's on the main roster right now. I'm not going to use her. Um, this Divas Revolution made no sense to me. Why bring up all of them at the same time? You see, it's not just me, people. <laughs> I, you got all this talent coming up at the same time and none of them are getting the pushes they deserve. Charlotte's getting a push right now, but all the other girls are getting buried and it was just a mistake. I mean, if you're going to do something like that, you should have had like gangland beatdowns and stuff going on, but you just had all these girls sitting out here and we don't know what to do with them. Here's another pretty face. So all at once, it's, it's where's it? Like, you're absolutely right. I agree with you. Where's the division at? You have, you know, three on three tag teams. I mean, it's it's filler. They got too much time to fill now and a lot pitch. of, uh, yeah, it's a lot of, a uh, lot of filler and a lot of stuff that doesn't matter um they need to do stuff i mean this league of nations thing that's another thing that's just like hey what the hell are these guys doing they're just sitting here you know why aren't they all four beating down roman reigns every time he comes out right they're just more they're a more hardcore 3 mb right and you know what happens to those guys <laughs> <laughs> right and right. so it's like we don't know what to do with you guys we're gonna put you on tv so you're in a group now we're in the league of nations absolutely and i actually thought that jack swagger was finally gonna get a push obviously jack swagger embarrassed the company when he had his dwi a few years ago and he lost his push you know when he fought del rio i actually thought that he was going to get that push back, but it doesn't seem like that's going to happen. No, he's just, I think he's kind of relegated himself to a career of just being a jobber. I mean, he can come out and get a cheap uh, We the People, you know? <laughs> he can get a cheap We the People plug, <laughs> but uh, he's he's pretty much a jobber, like you said. Uh, Absolutely. And he, it, it seems like that's all the WWE has, though, is jobbers. I mean, Orton's gone, Cena's gone, you know, you have Seth Rollins hurt. And, I mean, who's there? And that's the problem with not building up your own stars when you could have. So now they're forced to shove Roman Reigns in there and I don't think he's the right answer I uh, should have still built him up when you got Dina Ambrose that the fans are cheering for I think Ziggler would have been a great champion the fans were behind Ziggler but another guy that's getting buried you have these other guys or if you really want to shock it shock everybody instead of like Sheamus, who sat his moment, give Kevin Owens the strap, you Absolutely. know? And then now you got a new interesting product instead of recycling the same stuff we've seen for three years. I will say though, the TLC ladder match on TLC, that was awesome, that was epic to me. Yeah, it was a great match, it was a really good match. And are you talking about the tag team match or the? Tag team match. Yeah, New Day, that's one of the few good things the WWE has going. New Day is, they're hilarious, they got personality. They're still in the show every time they're on there. They're funny, they're corny, right? <laughs> Let's see the horn magic. But I, I love these guys because they are what the WWE needs. And these guys, you know, they're funny, but then they can go out there and win some matches, put on a good show, and they're entertainers. And so WWE needs to do something more with the New Day, too. Absolutely. And, you know, it's nine ninety nine. You can get the WWE Network. You know, I love watching Breaking Ground. We love watching NXT. NXT has so much power over the main roster. Do you think that's just solely a Triple H thing? Is Vince McMahon jealous maybe holding his product down? I read stories online, but I don't really watch it on the network. Work, but what it seems to me like NXT is doing that the WWE isn't is NXT is mixing it up. They're bringing in Samoa Joe. They're bringing in James Storm. They're bringing in all these guys that people want to see, and they're using them correctly. Um, they're mixing up their product, whereas the main product there's too many. It's Vince McMahon's way, and it's stale and dull. And like I was talking about Dean Ambrose, I think if you let him run hog wild like CM Punk did, or like Stone Cold Steve Austin did, that could be your next star, and that's what it needs. Or it needs a, a group like the NW or like Nexus a few years ago that just throws beatdowns on people so you have somebody to root for but right now there's nobody throwing beatdowns so you don't really know who the hills are right. because there's so much of a gray area so yeah like, who do you root for yeah you don't know who to root for and the fans are just like oh well they're Sheamus boo what I can say about the League of Nations is you know Del Rio has a US title Sheamus has the world title well Rusev has Lana so you know I think that's <laughs> the biggest prize in the business right, right. now right <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, you know, I just wish they'd do more. I wish we'd see some stuff like the NWO where they just beat down everybody or have a storyline. Just have a storyline with these guys. That's all I'm saying. Would you say that this is the CM Punk curse? Or are they uh, kicking themselves in the butt right now? I haven't heard that. And I think that could be part of the problem with them letting somebody run wild is what, C what happened with CM Punk. But they need CM Punk. They need a CM Punk right now. They need a Daniel Bryan right now. AJ they Lee also. 
Yeah, and bring her back too, okay? If you yeah, bring back Punk. <laughs> yeah, you know those guys could run wild right now. AJ Lee and Punk could dominate the division, have them be the ultimate hill couple, and That'd they could awesome. just run wild with the WWE. But they need somebody like that for people to hate or people to love. You know, they need a Daniel Bryan, and there's just nobody. They don't like Roman Reigns. Fans cheer Roman Reigns because they have to. There's no other options. Absolutely. So, would you would you predict that this week's Raw is going to be lackluster because you know they try to advance? You know, Roman now has the strap, but can can he keep it? Can he retain? the audience yeah he'll keep it until Wrestlemania and uh, I think this week's you know the Slammy Awards are always yeah you want to bet Roman Reigns wins wrestler of the year yeah I, 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 he, I think that's yeah we can do that yeah. yeah given that Roman Reigns will be superstar of the year what the only story I'd like to see happen with Roman Reigns is him carry the strap I mean, we're coming into the road to Wrestlemania right so Royal Rumble I'd like to see Dean Ambrose win the Royal Rumble and if Seth Rollins is back by Wrestlemania I would love to see that triple threat for the strap at Wrestlemania now yeah. No. That'd be a good match to watch. Now we got something that I'm buying into, you know. Absolutely. And it's a long road to WrestleMania. You know, some people online are saying that they're 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 basically tempting a Triple H versus Roman Reigns. Do we want to see that? If they put that in the Royal Rumble, that's fine. I mean, what else are you gonna do with those guys? And who else is gonna who else are you gonna take out of the Rumble right now? You know? Unless, that kind Daniel, of, unless Daniel Bryan comes back, remarkable you know, if it's a remarkable miracle there. Do you think Daniel Bryan, you think they're really gonna trust him with anything if he comes back? And you know, I think that's the problem. I think their problem is the ego and and it's like you have a 70 year old man the great Vince McMahon of course but I mean his viewers aren't 70 you know they're they're younger than that yeah and what have what worked in the 90s and what worked in the early 2000s isn't working now and the problem with keeping John Cena at top for so long is what is happening now now you're feeling the repercussions of John Cena being your top guy for 10 years because they sold out there's nobody behind him yeah exactly they sold out Cena was the man and now there's nobody behind him and you know what what, what, what I'm worried about is that now that Cena comes back and has even more leverage and say, you see, you guys suck without me. And then he's going to ask for, you know, more cash, more money, more power. You know, are we seeing the end of the WWE? I mean, you have Lucha Underground, you have Global Wrestling, TNA somewhere on Destination America, or I think it got canceled because I could never watch it on Destination America. <laughs> I think it's a POW TV or something. It's some new network. And then Jeff, what's up? Jeff Jarrett's got his thing going on. I don't know. The WWE could crumble, but there's no, TNA is not the answer. If somebody would get smart, if CM Punk would start his own federation, we maybe have something. If you get CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, those guys could go start their own thing. Mm -hmm. Then maybe you, you have something. Go grab a guy like Morrison who's down on Lucha Underground or somebody like that. Johnny Mundo. Yeah, there you go. Go grab somebody like that and then start your own federation. Well, see, my theory has always been that the reason that the WWE grabs these superstars like, you know, you, you mentioned... Uh, Storm and, and Samoa Joe. I don't know if they want to capitalize on these guys to help their product. I think they just want to grab the free agents so that they don't create their own competition against the WWE. They could very well be doing that, but there's so many guys the WWE has burned a bridge with that will never work for the WWE again. CM Punk. Um, that could probably do it now. You got CM Punk, Daniel Bryan if he gets released. AJ Styles would be a good one. Like I said, Morrison. Uh, you know, Dolph Ziggler, how much longer is he going to be sticking around? You got a talent pool here that you could build with if somebody just forked up the money and it's not going Maybe Jeff Jarrett doing it because everything that guy touches bells, you know. <laughs> Absolutely, and he busted somebody open with his guitar not too, not too long ago. Matt Hardy. <laughs> Matt Hardy, yeah. So before we go, we want to go ahead and show some of your uh, work on the reel here. You know, we're going to see the Gray Agenda and also Proud Souls, another sci-fi that you've, you've been working on this post production. And tell us a little bit about this clip. Okay, um, Gray Agenda. This is a clip about gray aliens uh, having an underground base at Jopal Lake, and then they abduct people. And in the clip you're about to see, my character has been abducted but they let him go to draw out a military spy nice and so he discovers these people locked in a cage and then proud souls is a uh, spiritual movie and my character is an orphan and meets net he didn't know he had so those are the clips where i guess we're about to see what do you have people locked up in cages you need to vacate the purposes immediately. No questions asked. No, please don't go. Don't go. Go get help. Be back. No, please don't go. I need you. I'm your nephew, George. Did you know you had a relative? You're the only one who could possibly understand what's going on with me right now. All the answers to so many questions I have. And you're a mute. Do 
you remember my father, Stanley? Stanley? Yes. I'm his son, your nephew. Nice. And another thing is, is Larry, he's actually the writer for a lot of these scripts. Uh, he does it all, guys. <laughs> this is the real deal here. Now, before we go, I just want to give some sad news that former head of security Jim Dotson passed away at the age of 49. There is a GoFund page since he doesn't have insurance or life insurance. So check that out at GoFund.com. And do you want to go ahead and drop your Facebook and Instagram, Larry, so they can get a hold of you? Yeah, man. Yeah. You can hit me up on uh, Facebook. It's Larry Stanley. I don't have Instagram, but Twitter at Big Bad Larry. Uh, easy to get a hold of me, man. Hit me up on Facebook or Twitter. Outside Standing. It was a pleasure to have you here. Hopefully we can get you here in the future. We look forward to watching your films. For Best Pro Wrestling Commentary, I am Roman Pierce, and he is Larry Stanley.